There's none like you. Into the darkness you rise, and out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. Lord, this is our testimony. And my God is greater. My God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. My God is healer. He's awesome in power. First Corinthians. I love Jesus. Verse 47, 1 Corinthians 15. Holy Spirit, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. the sovereign Lord would you come and make your presence known reveal the glory of the reason spirit of the sovereign Lord come and make your presence known reveal the glory of the reason let the weight of your glory let it cover us let the light of your river flow And let this truth of your kingdom reign in us. And let this truth of your kingdom reign in us. Let this truth of your kingdom reign in us. Let the light of your river flow. Let the light of revelation flow. 
alone Let this truth That makes your kingdom reign in us Let the life That brings glory reign in us Let the truth that transforms us reign in us let the eyes of the spirit reign in us let the light of the most high breathe on us let the sound of power reign in us let the weight of your glory let it fall Shakina glory fall A kind of glory oh. Let this truth That makes mighty man reign in us Let the light That swallows weakness Reign in us let the light that destroys fear reign in us. Let the weight of your glory fall. Huh. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh Lord, let your glory cover us. Let it cover us, let it cover us. For where we stand is holy ground. Where thou standest. Bow down and worship him. I will worship him. Oh, his presence is here. Majesty. Lord, I worship you. I bow down and worship him. Lord, we enter in. Lord, we enter in. Consuming fire, sweet perfume, truly your awesome presence, it fills this room. Consuming fire, you're the sweet perfume. Your awesome presence, your changing presence, your lifting presence, your mighty presence, your glorious presence, mysterious presence, your precious presence. It fills this room Consuming fire Sweet perfume I see your awesome presence That's what makes the difference It fills this room So I lift my hands 
in worship as I sing praises to your name I lift my hands in worship as I sing glory to your name so let the weight of your glory cover us katabarata posada bratila kapolya dabala your river flow your river flow let this truth of your kingdom reign in us, empower us. Let the weight of your glory Kadosh, 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 Kadosh. Shalom, Shalom, Jehovah, Shalom, Shalom. You're welcome in this place. Koinonia welcomes you, oh God. Shalom, Shalom, Jehovah, Shalom, Shalom. You're welcome in this place. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome in this place. What do Let the light of your river flow and may this truth of your kingdom reign in me. Let the way. Of your glory, mantle us with your glory.
angel song. To our midst the presence of the Father. You bring to our midst the presence of heaven. Hallelujah. It's the only song 
the angels sing to you alone you who seated on your throne forever you will reign hallelujah hallelujah we do these things because this is a place of encounter this is the protocol of an encounter when you invoke his presence in worship then he comes Lord Jesus thank you may the name of the Lord forever be lifted in this place May religion never, ever replace your presence in this place. May this place remain a place of encounter. Encounter with the Spirit of God. Encounter with the precepts of the kingdom. Encounter with the powers of the age to come. Strengthen us, O God, by the Spirit of Revelation. Let the vistas of the heavens be open as we explore the mysteries of the kingdom. Make us strong. May we be the ones that know their God. And may we do exploits. Hallelujah. Just the voices. You have won the victory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, you have won it all for me, sing hallelujah, Say, Lord, my eyes will see and my heart will receive. Pray. Cry from the depth of your heart. Open our eyes, O oh God, that we may behold wondrous things. The first man is of the earth, earthly. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthly, such are they also that are earthly. And also is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. 49. And as we have borne the image, oh hallelujah. As we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. I'd like us to read verse 49. Read it with understanding. One to read. Please help us with the fun. The Bible says, as we have borne it begins to give us a contrast 
of inhabitants and beings in this earth. Right? When you read the preceding verses, it says there are different kinds of bodies. Please listen to me. The teaching tonight will bless you. He said there are some bodies that are terrestrial. There are some bodies that are celestial. And all of them are within this territory. Hallelujah. And then the Bible says, in the same way, since we have borne the image of the earthly, there is a system in God that can help us manifest experientially the image of the heavenly. And this is what I'm going to be dealing with very briefly tonight. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 10. Help us, O oh Lord. Grant us understanding in the name of Jesus. Matthew chapter 6 from verse 10. As we have borne the image of the earthly, so we will bear the image of the heavenly. Verse 10. One to read if you're there. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Where? Not on earth. Not on earth. Thy will be done in earth. In the same way your will has been done in heaven. In heaven your will has been done. And that's why the fullness of your kingdom find expression. But Lord, let your kingdom find expression in the earth in the same degree, in the same dimension, and in the same similitude. Hallelujah. Tonight I want to share with us something that has helped my life through the years and is still helping my life. This for me is one of the keys to carrying very heavy weights of the glory, the life, the power, the beauty of the kingdom upon your life. If you will pay attention to what I'm about to teach you in these few minutes and you believe it and you walk in that light, then you will find out that First Corinthians 15 from verse 49 will become your testimony that here and now, you will be a manifestation of a reality that is not obtained in this realm. You will walk as though a God upon the earth. Hallelujah. Jesus began to talk and he said, when you pray, let this be part of the contents of your prayer. Our Father, who resides in the heavens and he says we hallow you revere him come to him with the spirit of reverence and worship and after that let the consummation of your prayer let the core of your prayer be your kingdom come. your influence the atmosphere of heaven the same principle that makes heaven heaven Lord, let it find expression in the earth. Not just on the ground, but in the earth. These mortal bodies of clay. Let the heavenly, let that which has made celestial beings find its way to the earth realm. Hallelujah. And find its way upon the inhabitants of the earth. That way, your will will be done. Your kingdom will come. Your glory will be revealed. Write this word down please. Transformation. Transformation. The Bible says now the Lord is that spirit. And it says where the spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. Not lawlessness. Freedom space and he said we all wherever that place is certain things happen there and one of it is that we all with open face there is an unveiling he says we behold him as though looking at ourselves in a mirror 
and then we begin to experience transformation so we are the image of the earthly but as we behold the heavenly there is a transformation that begins to happen and we begin to look like the heavenly it says we are changed from glory one dimension of glory to another and the name given to that process is transformation transformation is the process that makes you become like Jesus Christ transformation is the process that makes you become like Jesus Christ you can expound on it transformation is the process of alignment and conformity the process, that process of alignment, that process of conformity that makes a man become a manifestation and an expression of the heavenly. That makes any man become an expression of Jesus, the very Christ upon the earth. Transformation is the name given to the spiritual process the spiritual technology, the system by which the earthly becomes the heavenly, the system by which the weak becomes strong, the system by which the canal becomes spiritual. It's called transformation. The desire of God, listen, the desire of God is that the fullness of his glory his glory means his nature his essence the fullness of his power the fullness of his kingdom his influence the fullness of his culture his way of life invade the earth and find expression in the earth exactly the way it finds expression in heaven that is the heart cry of the father That the fullness of his culture, the fullness of his principles, his glory, his power, his wisdom, find expression in the earth as it is in the heavens. God is not satisfied just with the beauty and the, the excellence of heaven. He wants to birth that same experience. That was the idea behind the formation of Eden. An atmosphere that becomes a reflection of his character. An atmosphere that becomes a reflection of his excellence. An atmosphere that becomes a reflection of him. That's why he gave his exact dominion to man. Not an inferior type. His very dominion gave it to man. And it still is his desire that his fullness will find expression. If that happens in the earth, then we will see the harvest of souls. Then we will see transformation and revival across individuals and territories. Then we will see the systems and the kingdoms of this world becoming experientially the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. Then the ultimate plan of God will be fulfilled. That all things be headed up in Christ. Even as he submits to the father. And so the strategy is that Jesus submits to the father. And then the church in partnership with the Holy Spirit like a faithful bride. Submits to the authority of Jesus. And then through dominion and a demonstration of the reality of the kingdom. The church, the battle acts will bring creation under its feet. And then all things according to Colossians becomes headed up in Christ and he becomes the fullness of all things. This is the eternal plan of God. But for that to happen, his kingdom must come. Listen, please get what I'm saying. His kingdom, his influence, his glory. When that happens, then we will see a reality that is foreign to the earth finding expression. Because there are vessels that become containers of that reality. It is at that point we will see the eyes of the blind open.
by a technology that medicine cannot explain. It is at that point we will see men walk like gods upon the earth. Right? When they saw the apostles, they called them Zeus and Hermes. Greek gods. Because they operated laws that defied what man had known. And the heart cry of the father is that his kingdom, the fullness of his influence, the fullness of his power and his glory will find expression. Until that happens, God is still being misrepresented. The fullness of who God is will only be understood when his kingdom comes. If the kingdom of God does not show up in his fullness, certain dimensions of God will still remain vague and misunderstood. And that misconception will paint very wrong images about God. Are you following what I'm saying now? So the desire of God is that his kingdom will find expression in the earth. The desire of God is not just to take us to heaven. Please get this. The desire of God is not just for rapture to happen and the antichrist judged. All those things are part of the processes that will lead to the culmination because he is God and his sovereignty will make his prophecy to come to pass. However, he said, thou art my battle axe and my weapons of war. With you I will beat down nations. And so as it is, we do not yet see all things according to Hebrews under his feet. Are you, are you understanding the teaching tonight? So God wants heaven to find expression. Not just as a song. Not just as a cliche. Not just as a Christian suggestion. Not just as a theological fact. He wants it here and now. Here and now. In this place. Your kingdom reigns. Your kingdom reigns. In this place, here and now, we let your kingdom reign, your kingdom reign. So here and now, in this life and with this mortal body, he wants the image of the earthly to experience the fortest of the glories and the realities that dwell in heaven. But the limitation to that agenda is hidden in this word transformation or lack of it the process by which the earthly becomes the heavenly the process by which the treasure is transferred in earthen vessels the treasure by which a celestial body becomes terrestrial the process by which an ordinary biological being Comes literally a celestial being. When that happens, then we will bring our lives, our families, our territories, and the nations under the submission of the Christ. Listen, listen. What I am telling you is the reason why you are alive right now. If nobody has taught you this, then I want you to know that you do not even understand what we call Christianity or what we call the faith life. It is our participation in bringing this agenda to pass. Are we following now? And there is a way God wants to achieve this. I've taught it under the message, the emergence. You can get part three, but I just recap on it before we go to the main discussion tonight. I told you that there is a spiritual strategy to which cosmos will be subdued and will come under the governing influence of the king. The name of that strategy is the church. The church is not the coming together of people. Not just that. The church is not just a local assembly. The church is the name of the only spiritual strategy that is capable of birthing the purposes of God in its fullness. And so he says, Thou art Peter. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. 
and he says upon this rock I will lift that strategy that ecclesia and the gates of hell will not prevail so the church is God's only chance and hope not because he's not mighty he has chosen through his predeterminate counsel that it is only through the church that the multifaceted wisdom of the Christ will find expression and so the agenda of the of the father is at the mercy of the understanding and the participation of the church it's not at the mercy of the might of God it's not at the mercy of the sovereignty of God it's at the mercy of the equipping and the participation of the church it is for this reason that he gave unto some apostles and prophets and teachers and evangelists and pastors for the equipping that they enlighten the saints that they build up the saints that they orient the saints that they they become instruments of birthing transformation in the saints so that the saints now transform will do the work of the ministry what is the work of the ministry giving god space to find expression in the earth this is what ministry is all about hallelujah so the spirit of religion is the operation of darkness that masquerades itself as light and rather than exposing the people to the light of god that equips them and prepares them as an army it gives them a form of godliness but the the capacity the power in it to birth that transformation is not there so for such people their testimony is ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth so they learn they have devotionals right there's all kinds of bible studies and prayer monday tuesday wednesday thursday there are church services however those activities have been shrouded in religion and so it does not sustain the ability to break out the light of god in them and so after many years of being in church after many years of being an elder being a deacon being a pastor after many years of a church existing that desire of god is unable to find expression because the average believer does not even know why they come to church they come to church as a way of satisfying guilt they come to church as a way of of trying to dance to status quo so that they can avoid the embarrassment of being told they are carnal but it's much more than that there is a heart cry and those who will carry out this heart cry are the ones who become unkillable they are the ones who the Bible talks about them. It says, for them, those people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings for their sake, saying, don't touch these ones. It is for those kind of people that God would rather a nation die than for something to happen to them. They are the ones who are granted access to taste of the powers of the age to come realities that are not apportioned for our dispensation but on the strength of their yieldedness they can touch into certain things this is what happened to david it was not given to him to see the coronation of jesus it was not in his dispensation but his loyalty and allegiance and alignment opened him up to the mysteries of the spirit and he peeped into the coronation and he said the lord said to my lord see thou at my until I make your enemies your footstool. The prophet Isaiah was not supposed to see the outpouring of the spirit that Joel would prophesy about. But because of his alignment, he tasted of an ability and a dimension that was not made for his dispensation. And he saw in a vision with stammering lips and another tongue will they praise me. Wherein I have said this is the rest and the refreshing. It was Joel that began to prophesy. All of these prophets, bits and pieces of their revelation into that ultimate agenda. And here we stand today, the prophesied generation. Here we stand today, the generation that all the prophets have spoken about. While they stood here, they saw you in the loins of prophecy. And here we are, 
majorly wasting our time and wallowing in the in the futility of religion unable to partner with the holy spirit to exert any tangible force in the spirit as far as advancing his agenda is we are caught up in the web of religion pastor apostle prophet caught up in the religion of meetings and conventions and conferences organizing ourselves and organizing god and his agenda out of our program but jesus said this jesus himself not a prophet he said your desire should be to participate in any way to see his kingdom come meaning if you are alive today hearing the sound of my voice and there is no active contribution from your life in birthing this agenda you do not deserve to live for he said i shall not die he didn't say live to roam around wallowing in religion he said i shall not die but live to declare is god speaking to us and so the way he will achieve this agenda is through the church god wants to do this by revealing himself listen the way that the agenda of god will find expression is when his glory is revealed first in this earthen vessel and then through this earthen vessel to the entire territory of human race so the agenda is twofold the manifestation of it first to you the battle acts he wants you to experience his glory for yourself in your life that your life becomes an expression of his beauty and glory that your life becomes a validation to the fact that the kingdom is true and that the power of god exists and then out of that experience you begin to dispense the grace and the glory and the anointing and the power from your personal testimony as a contribution of your quota to see his kingdom come are we learning something say after me god desires that my life will host his presence god desires that my life my body my spirit will host his power god desires that i become an expression of the reality of god's ability here and now god desires that i become an expression of heaven and everything it carries here and now that's god's desire for you god's desire is bigger than giving you a wife don't reduce god god's desire is bigger than giving you a jeep the devil can give you a jeep god's desire is bigger than giving you crowds and giving you a church and giving you anointing god's desire is that the fullness of himself he wants you to become a conduit of his glory a conduit of his wisdom that word dogza the full representation of all that is obtainable in him as far as our dispensation is given and defined by he wants it to find expression so the limitation of the agenda of god is the limitation of the ability of the saints to be transformed and not the limitation of his mind the inability of the saints to contend for transformation has misrepresented God in the earth. This is the tragedy in the earth right now. He wants to reveal his wisdom and his glory and his power in your life first and then through your life. Please don't make that mistake to just think he just wants to reveal his glory through you. No, he wants to reveal himself in you then through you. In you, then through you. In you, then through you. There are two limitations that the Bible reveals to us. Two limitations that can frustrate the church from achieving this. There are two limitations that the Bible points to us. That as much as we say we love God, there are two limitations that will stop us from ultimately satisfying the desire of the father number one the first limitation is what the bible calls the gates of hell the gates of hell matthew 16 verse 18 the gates of hell 
the first limitation that the Bible openly points out to us that will be a challenge it will be a standard that will attempt to resist this agenda the gates of hell he said and I say unto thee thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my ecclesia and the gates of hell not demons not principalities the gates the fullness of the arsenal of hell what is the gate of hell it means satan and all the arsenals and the strategies that he has satan and all the arsenals and strategies that he has in an attempt to fight the advancement of the kingdom that's what is called the gate of hell the gate of hell represents satan and all his gimmicks comes from the greek word stratomai it says do not be unaware of the devices that word is stratomai the strategies the skills the arsenals of satan there is a formula he uses for deception there is a formula he uses for witchcraft there is a formula he uses those formulas are like secret codes they are also called mysteries That is the principle with which he has brought nations for instance the bible tells us that satan uses the spirit of fear to put people in captivity he says and to deliver them through through fear have all their lifetime be subject to bondage so the spiritual strategy to bring bondage is fear and like job what you fear now becomes your lot are you getting me so the bible says the gates of hell will rise you want to get a job there is a spiritual formula to frustrate you it is part of the arsenals of the gate of hell you want to get married there is a spiritual formula because your marriage has a route to bringing this agenda to pass since that there is a prophet that your womb should produce and satan will fight it it's not about you coming from east or west it's about something when he said the seed the seed shall bruise the head of the serpent satan started looking for everybody that looks like the seed he's still searching today hallelujah and he will use everything everything he will use everything your sensory perceptions your financial condition your family situation your academic condition every strategy satan is desperate more desperate than you can ever imagine to see that the agenda of God does not come. Let me tell you, those who trivialize the reality of Satan and his plot to fight to death the agenda of God are joking. Jesus himself said there will only be one limitation to the building of the church, the gates of hell. The spirit of religion came from Satan. Activity without power came from Satan. Because when the nation of Israel in Egypt wanted their exodus, the moment they told Moses we want to go, Moses told um, Pharaoh, what did Pharaoh say? Occupy them. It's because they are free. Start giving them activities. Let them have meetings upon meetings. Seminars upon seminars. And then they get busy and it convinces them that activities equal to spirituality. Is God speaking to us tonight? Hallelujah. The gates of hell. They will haunt you. I guarantee you. When Jesus went to fast, Satan followed him and stood somewhere watching Jesus praying, listening to his prayer points as he communicated with heaven for 40 days. Satan was nowhere else in the world roaming around. He was waiting. Because it was, a, it was a, 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 a defining moment for Jesus. As soon as Jesus was done, here comes Satan. His strategy again. If you are really the son of God, turn these stones to bread. And he took him up a cliff and so on and so forth. And the Bible says when Jesus overcame him, what did he do? He left him for a season. Is it in your Bible? He left him forever. Make no mistakes that because you think you are born again and filled with the Holy Spirit, the devil will cross his leg and say wow promise so you are going to have a great ministry in the future well done you are a new creation in christ you are joking you are joking hallelujah the gates of hell they will rise brothers and sisters let me tell you 
the gates of hell will rise you are a brother you love God the gates of hell will rise through different strategies hallelujah look at Samson the gates of hell rose up he was just moving and one demon entered a lion and the lion came to feed you think the lion just he was just strolling around and he said lion let's let's try wrestling you think that's what was happening to Samson because Satan was trying everywhere to find out about his strength so he used the strongest of the beasts and a lion came and Samson tore it into pieces and Satan said it's not there strategy change he used the Philistines they caught him right and he, he used the jawbone of an ass Satan said I missed it again another strategy Delilah if I've used physical strength let me use emotional strength where is that beautiful Delilah and Delilah came and Satan saw how vulnerable Samson was he said we are making progress we are making progress he, he, Delilah insisted and when she cut off his hair the judge of Israel had been brought to his knees hell began to celebrate the gates of hell prevailing Samson's eyes were plucked off Samson's hair was cut off and I can imagine God saying come on Samson you gave it cheap to Delilah you would have asked me for a wife I would have given you a wife and Delilah ran away but then what they did not know is that there is still a package in God to restore listen God said Samson I know you have blown it your Lord now is dead but you would you would die in victory let all the people that represent evil in that land gather in one auditorium and the strength will be restored and Samson said oh Lord I know I've sinned against you the, the Lord you have given me for my generation as a judge I allowed a woman sleeping with Delilah that's what some of you are doing as you are looking at me and laughing as if it does not matter you carry your death you are insulting Esau for taking porridge and some of us have done what is cheaper than taking porridge when you know what is upon your shoulder you will package yourself and warn yourself from the spirit Samson made Israel to suffer just because the strength and the salvation of Israel was upon him as a judge but then you will not say he didn't fulfill his assignment because he pushed he said oh God let me die with them and while he pushed the Bible says he killed more people in his death than he did in his lifetime imagine the mass burial of evil all the evil men gathered together with their idol and he crushed them into pieces and died with them every man that showed up was given a piece of this assignment and they ran with it they didn't do it part time they spent their life doing it when Jezebel was threatening the prophets of God Elijah the Tishbite arose a fiery prophet who frustrated the council of darkness and left and now probably in the 60s or the 50s or the 40s who knows one woman was crying in slave trade and say oh lord i may die but let this little child of mine exalt your name and that person became your ancestor became your grandfather became your father and now it is you that woman's prayer who died in the slave trade that Lord I saw a vision that Africa must be saved that's you sitting down roaming around and God is saying do you not know you are a manifestation of prophecy how we limit him how we limit him the gates of hell 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 18 let's hurry up There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain. 
Break every chain. Break every chain. Listen. Wherefore, we would have come to you, even I, Paul, but once again, the gates of hell. Satan personally took it as a responsibility. Satan told all the demons, stand. This Paul, I've noticed this guy is, I mean, this guy is just winning souls and expanding and enlarging the territories of the kingdom. I will hinder him by myself. Listen, when you see people being challenged and confronted, shut your mouth. It's because they have, many of you have not received any confrontation. You think it's just because you are in Christ. It's because you have not done anything striking enough. At least start praying. Pray to a point that it generates fire and see what happens. That's the night somebody will appear to you and say, let me warn you. Your father obeyed us. Your mother obeyed us. Take care and leave. You wake up in the morning and say, what happened? I'm praying and I'm seeing somebody appear. And you think it's backsliding. It's because fire did something in the spirit. The gates of hell. Let me tell you, there are giants in every mountain. Don't let any man fool you. I pity any man of God that wants ministry, wants crowd, wants miracle and will not pray. You are roaming around doing geo or doing president. You will die like a chicken, I tell you. See, let me tell you. Though if you know how desperate Satan is to destroy your life, Satan does not mind if you die after koinonia on your way going. That's when you will appreciate the mercy and the grace of God. Because for one month now, you have not prayed, some of you. And you have traveled and gone everywhere. And yet nothing happened. Just a Kai. It's just because I'm in Christ. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. A lady prayed in the night brothers and sisters prayed in the night physically in the morning her uncle called her and said what did you do her physical uncle alive what did you do i can't remember he said be careful you don't know who you are trying let me tell you gates will not open like that you want to bring breakthrough you want barrenness to stop in your family you want oppression to stop the cause of poverty to stop all this all this tea christianity will only the devil will encourage you to keep doing it but let fire burn upon the altar and you watch reactions from the gate of hell oh yes i tell you reaction from the gate of hell is not a sign that the victory of jesus is not there it's a sign that something you are doing is striking a chord how many of you have finished praying and you find out that your loved ones start insulting you and there is fight in the house it's when you finish praying the day you don't pray there's joy and peace and love even somebody who doesn't like you just loves you but you take out time and blast in tongues for two hours non-stop as you step out they say look i've been warning you and you are saying what did i do it's not the person the gates of hell attempting to stop you You tell that man, no, I won't sleep with you. I'm going somewhere and see what happens. That's the day somebody will come and tell you, we don't do it like this in Nigeria. Better bend or become a fool. And you sit down and say, truly, Satan is threatened by every communication of zeal towards your destiny. I know what cares Satan. I found out early in life. The moment you say, I am taking a step, I tell you, Satan fears you. It's not everybody Satan is afraid of. There are men who have determined when you worship God and you say, Lord, in life and in death, Satan says, what do I do with this person? Whether you pray or not, things are working well. I guarantee you it's because somebody somewhere is praying for you. A day will come, God will wake you and say, Mr. Man, there are still other sinners getting born again. Your tenure of, of cheap playing Christianity has been expired. I said, it doesn't really matter. Oh God, I thank you. I love you. You are my king. You died. You've done everything. You will, you will waste like a chicken. Especially, take what I'm saying serious. I'm not playing games. There is the gate of hell. It will meet you on the road to your job. 
it will meet you when you are about to give birth one of our ladies just put to bed Annie worshipped him bouncing baby boy hallelujah at a point they were talking stories here and there and she said she had a dream and she saw me I thank God for using my face as a communication of victory and seriousness in the spirit no I say it with, with all you if you see me in your dream before this hear what I'm saying before you carry newspaper around and say you are, you are programming all of that let me tell you some of you are not serious with your destiny even you you know you are not serious that's why the gate of hell will pass you you say Look, what of me they say no 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 you are not an issue there is somebody we are looking for listen may your life not be so cold that the gate of hell ignores you you would think it's spiritual growth but it's a sign of being so inert in the spirit you are not striking any chord when the devil wants to destroy your parents he comes freely no resistance whatsoever you snow in demons come in do what they do and they and they, they come out and you wake up i refuse my life to be like that for as long as i am alive the devil will know that i love the lord and i will stake my life to see his kingdom come are you getting what i'm saying do you know there are some of you is the covering of your prayer that is keeping your family make no mistakes about it they are criticizing you and you don't know why it's a reaction don't stop that's the time to stay after they do all of that you find a corner you know how kings reign come on you know how they reign don't stand outside behaving like a fool you lock yourself fire is rising everywhere in the spirit and the gates of hell are saying here he comes again may they know your name he said Jesus I know Paul I know Joshua Selman I know they will know you and know your tongues once they hear it they say here he comes Shekete katababa, manta protokaya, tongues that have grown with pain, tongues that have grown with sacrifice. The gates of hell will fight anything they can fight in your life. Please be aware of it. You may be as beautiful as the sun. You will watch men pass you like this. That's when it will occur to you that the God of this world can blind people's eyes hallelujah one day in my life fridge fell on my head the devil wanted to destroy my life yet by the mercy of God I've shared with you some of don't think I'm playing games that's why if listen when the devil was doing that he saw the word I'm giving you it's not just because of Joshua Selman when they looked at the womb of her that was with child they said they saw two nations not two people there are some of you the, the arsenals of hell rising against you doesn't even have anything to do with you as in you is what you represent backslide and see how the devil just leaves you and upon this rock I will build my church if you travel up and down and come back safe it's not luck there is a law of life if you don't know it you will keep being afraid for the rest of your life tomorrow we are going to Obomosho praise the Lord to go and invade and set fire is fire all the way brothers and sisters mm. to break every chain break every chain may your appearance be the threat of hell in any territory that when you show up come on man look there are some of you the reason why god will insist that you marry somebody is because he's taking himself to that family he packaged himself to you and he's saying go there and you enter that family and you just discern the spiritual atmosphere and see chains that have kept people and say for introduction welcome note Manta 
lift up your heads all ye gates that's introduction but why has your life not tossed this kind of threat to the gates of hell hallelujah Moses threatened the devil when he died Satan took his body his dead body they were fighting over his dead body Satan said he's dead I still want it because if he resurrects I, I rather carry it and keep it and make sure nothing happens the dead body of a man Elisha died and his dead body still brought somebody back to life But the beautiful part is that Luke 10 19 he said behold see I have given you whether you know how to access it or not is not the issue but I have given you he said behold when the Bible tells you behold it means see conceive what I'm saying as a reality in your spirit it's not just open your eyes and see you are already see you are not blind behold man takata yabada I give you I give I confer upon you power to tread upon serpents scorpions and over how many all the powers of the enemy the word power there is the word exousia authority i give it to you joshua selman because you will need it you will never be able to advance koinonia without that power there are gates that will rise there are gates over Zaria. don't think this crowd gathering outside is just because satan was asleep there is a force we know where we do it when the prayer band comes together on tuesday as they lift their voice something is happening and while you are there in your room some chains just break and you say let me go for koinonia today and something wants to keep you but god will say come 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 listen please let me submit to you in all sincerity if your prayer life is dead use this meeting to jack it back to life i'm not playing games this is not an issue of i'm calling to the ministry of prayer nobody is called into any ministry of prayer i say everybody is called into the ministry that will make jesus come the advancement of the kingdom he didn't tell some let me teach you how to pray the rest go fishing he was talking to everybody you see the importance of prayer if you are not told this let me tell you what i'm doing to you is imparting the spirit of prayer and supplication if i don't give you a reason to pray you will never pray all these lazy things people do around and let me tell you something a big secret see explore the mystery of night prayers we'll, we'll soon do when there is a series on that the mystery of night prayers when all the noise and all the things that, that stop unnecessary angelic activities because of disobedience those people are asleep and you are praying you are just worshipping putting worship like this that's why it's good to be rich create a prayer garden in your house put flowers put the portrait of Jesus remove every nonsense that Nigeria has put in your head and you put it and you wake up in the night you carry your notebook where you are trusting God for direction for the next level you carry your Bible you carry your recorder this is what I do this is what I do I put heavy worship for hours and while that is happening I'm lying down flat with notebooks shut oh lord this land is opening up god said don't go anywhere stay in one place say thank you jesus for saving me i would have made a fool out of myself and god says i want to do more son you are limiting me you are limiting me expand your capacity thank god for what you have seen in koinonia but it's only little and i say lord supply the grace and that heavy shakina comes I lie down there i sleep and i wake up i sleep and i wake up the body is tired i say sleep there i'm not going anywhere that's what you do on your bed you lie down and then you put the earphone and you sleep off that is is a basic level of spiritual growth 
is spiritual growth that is a reflection of laziness. You don't write your exams on your bed and say, bring my exam paper. No matter what the rain is, you get up. Please, are you getting blessed? I'm trying to impart some level of seriousness in us. Because this is how the great will reign. The gates of hell. Everybody say, I have authority. When I read this scripture years ago, it made me afraid. There are two words in this whole thing that makes me fear God. Not behold, not power, not all. By any means or any means. What does by any means mean to you? Is the part of scripture you understand that will open up. When the Bible says nothing shall by any means. It's a double confirmation. So in case anything happens and I didn't pray. Satan will still not use it as a yardstick. Because the revelation of by any means is at work in my life. By any means. Whether by means of my ignorance or carelessness. That scripture still fortifies me. While God is trying to restore me. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you only believe in the power, that's what you see. If you believe the by any means part, that's why some of you were almost sleeping with one lady one day. You two, you don't know what happened. Right? Never brought light or something. That's the power of God working. Don't, don't just laugh. Come on, you know I will talk to you. Right? Or you were planning to go somewhere and rain fell without cloud by any means. Keeping you. I want you to realize that you truly have authority. Now, whether you have received it is one thing for me to give you this. It's another thing for you to receive it and it is yet another thing to know how to use it. Are you getting me? Whether or not you refuse it, it does not mean I did not give you. He said, I give you authority. Let's hurry up. The second limitation that the Bible lets us see is the limitation that is caused by lack of a transformed and an aligned mind I want to dwell on this a little and then we'll pray the first limitation is the gates of hell Satan but the second and even bigger limitation is lack of a transformed mind the absence of a transformed mind can be a limitation to the might and the glory of God finding expression. Now, let me explain something very quickly. I want to just correct something very, very quickly. Please look up. I taught something and we're having a school of ministry and I did a little teaching and I saw the way the students, the thing was just nailing them and uh, God, they were saying, it's not like I don't agree with you, but let it just settle down. What we call the tripartite nature of man. I want to teach you something. Please look up. People have written books who have never had any encounter with God and have written all kinds of audacious books. Let me have three people. I want to correct something now, please. Hallelujah. Watch this. Just stand face. You stand in the middle. You are wearing white. God bless you. Watch this. Look at this. This is what you have been taught. Now, I'm not against what we call the tripartite nature of man. But I want to teach you something that will really liberate you. Otherwise, you will not understand this transformation thing I'm talking about. What I'm going to teach is very powerful now. This is what we have taught people. This is man number one, spirit. This is man, same man number two, soul. Is that not true? This is man number three, body. This is what you have taught. The Bible never teaches this one. This is nonsense. That's religion that brought up that. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? It is true that man is a tripartite being. But the concept of tripartite being is not three distinct individuals. Like Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Uh -uh. It's in the similitude of that. But watch this. This is the part I want to explain to you. What is the soul of man? Look up. If you don't understand this, forget transformation. Forget carrying the power of God and the glory of God. What exactly is the soul of man? It is true that the Bible says that you'll be kept spirit, soul, and body. Right? But what is the soul of man? 
is what i'm saying is can you separate the spirit of man to say this is spirit you this is soul stand here this is body can that happen look at me when a man dies how many objects or entities are separate two is that not true whatever you call it whether spirit or soul we're about to find out but whatever let's call it x x comes out and the body is lying down there correct is that true we're about to get the name of x now listen <laughs> he said why don't no, say why there's no why in the equation are you are you following what i'm saying now if you don't understand this you will be confused which part relates to god which part should change which part goes to heaven and there is that's to tell you believers are not even growing because if you are growing you must meet this question on the way are you getting what i'm saying what is the soul look up we teach that man is a spirit he has a soul he lives in a body very correct it's only that we don't think over what we are saying joshua selman listen joshua selman is a person he has a handkerchief he lives in a room how many assuming this room is a living thing how many living things do we have are you getting what i'm saying now what you call the soul please get this never forget what i'm about to teach you now what you call the soul listen is the spirit of man but connected to his will emotions and intellect the will emotion and, and intellect of man are forces or spiritual frameworks that were attached to his spirit man to be able to help that spirit relate with the body are you getting what i'm saying so when the bible says man is a spirit it is true in that he's describing the fact that this spirit entity came from god right but the spirit like that if the spirit just comes to the body there will still not be interaction because of law of territory go and get my message mysteries of the kingdom i've taught on the law of territory that there must be compatibility in territories that's why spirits cannot move freely in the earth they need material bodies is that true because of the law of territory so the spirit as it were is unable to find expression physical in the body until a dividing line are you getting what i'm saying now an attachment that helps the spirit to communicate with this container called the body and that attachment is the mind composed of your will ability to make decisions so the spirit wills and through the will of man the body executes that will are you getting what i'm saying emotions and then intellect a sense of comprehension so this body can wake up as an intelligent person with a brain remove the will emotion and the intellect and you don't have a soul again you just have spirit and body are you getting what i'm saying so when you say man is a soul you are right when you say man is a spirit you are right but i'm telling you the dynamics of the difference because when you get born again this guy watch this when you get born again in, in his original sense your spirit man is united with Christ it experiences the fullness of salvation immediately immediately oneness so where are you getting my point the so life implanted here but that so life has not found expression in this body that so life has not permeated these faculties that was given to you that is why although you are born again you find out that you may still have that appetite to smoke the memory of what you did is still there because this dividing line the will emotion and intellect has not been transformed are you getting what i'm saying so the bible puts it this way first peter chapter 1 verse 9 first peter chapter 1 verse 9 you need to understand this herbalists understand this those who do astral travel right what they call them harry krishna or all this world really they understand this very well it's part of the foundational teachings that they are taught everybody read want to read the word end there is the culmination of your faith 
receiving the culmination of your faith what is it this is talking to believers what is the salvation of your soul the salvation of your soul is when your will your emotions and your intellect progressively begin to experience the fullness of the reality of what has happened in your spirit the degree to which that salvation happens is the degree to which your body begins to respond more perfectly to the impulses of the spirit which is connected with God are you understanding what I'm saying so watch this all authority has been given so we believe the word of God that means this spirit man is carrying the very authority of Jesus that means that if the mind of Christ is automatically attached to your spirit experientially nothing will be impossible for you again because there is no resistance as far as your soul realm is concerned are you getting what I'm saying are we following what I'm saying but this is usually the problem watch this all power is here the body is a puppet is ready to execute anything that these channels give it room to are you getting what I'm saying now this is all the power of God but this is the level of access so that power can barely find expression to the body so all that the body executes are you getting what I'm saying is just a little and a fraction of the capacity of what is resident there but because human beings look at the body and so promise now teaches because he used his eyes to read oh sick bodies you can be healed blind you will be healed and your spirit man is saying yes we have the power don't fear but because you do not have that vision of your soul the transformation what makes the earthly heavenly are you getting my message now that very factor i now come to him on wheelchair is it true that all authority has been given yes and i say stand up and he can't stand up he sits back down i say look ginger your faith let's try it again watch this stand up and nothing happens and at the end of it this guy says your jesus is a liar what happened he was misrepresented you just misrepresented jesus christ because what you read and what happened conflicted themselves do you agree with me now i am telling you that god is in his throne at the mercy of your transformation as mighty as he is on the throne he's at the mercy give me space and then while you are struggling a man like benny him comes and he just stands and says holy if you are on a wheelchair stand up stand up and he stands up and he's walking what happened more jesus than you no no there is a greater conformity to the image of the christ that has made him his body now responds in greater measure are you getting what i'm saying so it is this middle man that is your next project the moment you get born again your job is to bring that mind that contains your will emotion and intellect that makes your spirit called a soul right so when we say salvation of the soul you're not really doing anything per se although we generally say spirit man are you getting my point but what we really mean i'm breaking the dynamics for you is that attachment to your spirit man called your will emotion and intellect that is the doorway through which the reality and the glory of god find expression because he that is joined to christ is one spirit your spirit man has been joined to christ except you don't believe the bible but that christ cannot show up on the scene because your mind is a limitation so i come as a preacher and i say in the name of jesus darkness flee and although the spirit is willing but the flesh becomes weak because the doorway through which the possibilities of god through the spirit will find expression in the body is also weak so i look at somebody oppressed and i say in the name of jesus christ be free and nothing happens when nothing happens over a long time the devil now comes and says why don't you try me you have tried the rest jesus being part of the rest and you say truly let's go to the village we have tried man of god i appreciate you 
I know God is using you mightily, but the emergency requires another force to come into attention. And the herbalist that you meet has mastered the art of yielding his faculties. See, this is the same thing that happens when demons come. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Let me teach you something now, watch this. A man who is not born again can have demons attach themselves the same way the Holy Spirit seeks to attach himself. That's called demon possession. Are you getting me? The will is helplessly at the mercy of that so the man can carry out anything. This man can be born again. Demons can no longer come to his spirit man per se but they use the doorways of these faculties. So between the spirit and the body there is an interruption. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So he can be born again, yet anger is still killing him. He can be a man of God, yet he's still masturbating and he's praying in tongues. Genuine tongues, real tongues. And you are saying, Kai, this man of God is fake. No, he's not fake. Something is happening in the soul realm. The salvation of his soul has not been perfected. So the Bible says it this way. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal because it's not the realm of the flesh but mighty through god are you seeing now he shows you how that transformation happens to the pulling down of strongholds casting every imagination every high thing that dwells in that soul realm and bringing every thought to the obedience of christ listen so the difference between me and many of us is not necessarily more anointing as we call it the difference is more alignment more yieldedness more translation so it makes you reflect the heavenly this is what happened to enoch enoch yielded himself in a point that in his lifetime this his mind was so yielded and this body started experiencing immortality you see the concept of immortality that many preachers, people like Kobus, great man I love and honor, he's gone to be with the Lord. He caught the revelation of immortality, but not the dynamics of its manifestation. So he knew from the word of God that if immortality is at work in your life, the first thing that happens is you stop aging. At once, you stop aging. That's a sign that immortality is at work. But it so happens that immortality is not an impartation. The fullness of that which is in your spirit seeks to find expression in your body. And our yieldedness is so slow that our lifetime cannot contain that degree of transformation. So God just takes your spirit and your body lies. The moment the trumpet shows up, the law of immortality is what will make your body. That's the law of resurrection. That's what makes a seed to arise again. Are we getting blessed? Bless you guys. I just hope you understood what I said. Psalm 78 verse 41. Please let's rush. Help us Holy Spirit. Holy, holy, holy. 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 Yeah, they turned back and tempted God. And what else did they do? They what? They limited the Holy One. Who are the day? Mortal men. God wanted to step in. Oh Israel, I want to do mighty things in your midst. But the Bible says they limited God. They limited God. A man can limit God. Brothers and sisters, how many times have we limited God in our lives? How many times have we limited God in our finances? How many times have we limited God in our ministries? Who told you the dead cannot rise? Who told you all these things cannot happen? There is something stopping the realities that have been deposited in the spirit man. And so every time we engage, I'll be sharing with us the forces that will help us attain to this transformation. Listen. I will never forget the first day that I was going to experience the anointing of the spirit in my life. I've never seen it before. Never laid hands on anybody. I just kept praying and doing all the things that I knew to do. And one day, 
there was a lady who came from somewhere and I prayed you know we bought food for her and then she I prayed for her she got born again and I was about to minister the baptism of the Holy Spirit just by faith and I just laid my hands and it was as if I was dreaming I just saw somebody moving back I had barely touched her and that's how she just went on the floor ah! I said oh God what, what is this good news that I'm seeing so be excited when you begin to see it. don't just be childish about it that's because some of you once you see that you keep looking for people whose <laughs> surface area to volume ratio is small so that the anointing will enter fast you now go and look for small small ladies and try to throw them i remember years ago there was a gentleman okay the power of god will touch you now now and the lady is just doing like this but refusing to fall then you put one finger you know fall two fingers you are doing madness the agenda of God is bigger than that thing. God will just let you because at least you are cooperating with him. So just do and let's continue. But it doesn't mean God, you are slowing down your progress. Some of you are doing it, Abby. Praise the Lord. And so from that time, I began to see, I will never forget when I saw one dimension of the operation of the Holy Spirit in my life. I think it was our first crusade, Panchin crusade. We usually have pastor's conference where we have some time with the pastors, teach them. That was in 2006. And then we we'll have like, um, we we'll just distribute ourselves in different churches and go and worship with them. So I was in a church and I gave a word of knowledge. When I gave a word of knowledge, the person literally stood up by the anointing. You know this running that people run out and come. Brrr, I was shocked. I thought that's how they do it in the church. I called another person and he ran out. I could not understand. I didn't know that gradually, 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 hallelujah. Let me use medical terms. Have you seen times when medical people, a woman wants to give birth, right? And they said that her pelvic area has not dilated enough. Is that true? Is there a baby? Yes. Does he want to come out? Yes. Why is he not coming out? The mother, right? And sometimes they have to do all kinds of things. Worse come to worse when nothing is wrong, they just tear her open and carry that child because the child must come out. Pray that God will not have to do CS for you for this destiny thing to come out by force. As soon as Zion travails, the Bible uses that simile too. She will put forth a child. So, the reason why God is able to do what he's doing now in a larger capacity is that by grace and by constant partnership with the spirit over the years, we have been able to open a little more. So the transformation that has, our mindset has been able to come in greater alignment with the word of God. So more of heaven can find expression to our lives. But compared to where God wants to take, we are still so slow. This is why we must continue contending. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That is the reason why we celebrate men of God. We don't just celebrate the men. We celebrate their sacrifice of giving God space to find expression. That's why a man can enter a city and that city will shake. Not just shake in terms of crowd. A lot of even people who will not come for the crusade. There's a woman. I think one of the few women on earth that I know is alive. That carries the presence of God in the order of Ketri. She's still alive till today. When that woman is coming for a crusade immediately they spot her car that's how healings and deliverance happen i was shocked i didn't know there's such a person in the earth ah the day i saw that i said my goodness ah this is heaven this is what we're saying this woman stepped into the crusade ground and my goodness the kind of miracles i'm not talking of all these miracles that you don't even know whether you are healed or not you are just afraid of the pastor so you say yes provable miracle wounds that will close right away not magic right away wounds closing i said my goodness oh god so you still have men and women and ladies do you know you have an advantage over men because of your configuration your configuration was designed in the similitude of the holy spirit you see that that's why many ladies are easily possessed and demonized because their configuration is in the similitude of the operation of the Holy Spirit. Let's write a few things. 
A transformed mind. I'm defining it now. A transformed mind is the mind of Christ. That's what the Bible calls the mind of Christ. A transformed mind is the mind of Christ. I'm defining it now. It is the mind that has come into agreement. It is the mind that has come into agreement and alignment with the word of God. Come into agreement and alignment with the word of God. Comma, and has willfully submitted to the influence of the Holy Spirit. That's a transformed mind. So a will, emotion and intellect that has come into agreement. You no longer conflict the principles of God. An alignment and a mind or mindset that has submitted to the full influence of the Holy Spirit. This is what the Bible calls the end of your faith. The culmination of the work of salvation. And this very one, transformation is not initial. It's not automatic. It's not at once. It's progressive. It takes a while. It is over that that the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. Let's look at Philippians chapter 2 verse 12. It says, walk out your salvation. You see it now. That's the part he says, walk out. Not just the work of the law. Not just trying to add something to what Jesus has done. No. Walk it out. The walk out there. It says, wherefore my beloved as ye have always obeyed not in my presence only but now much more in my absence comma walk out your what your own salvation as a matter of urgency what is the work there is the name given to your participation your cooperation with the holy spirit in your fasting you are working it out i'll be sharing with us in your prayer and all the points i'm about to give you here you are working it out romans chapter 13 verse 14 the bible gives it an interesting picture it says put on the lord jesus christ where it's like a cloth put on put ye on the lord jesus christ and what by so doing make no provision for the flesh that means there will be space for the flesh until you put on that put on the transformation is like wearing a new garment your possibilities in life through God is defined by your degree of submission in the soul realm to the power and the glory and the might of God hallelujah You see why we love and honor the Holy Spirit. Write this very quickly. The degree of transformation and alignment to God by any man. The degree of transformation and alignment to God by any man. Exactly becomes the degree of access the degree of transformation and alignment to God by any man exactly becomes the degree of access to the glory and the power of God in and through his life. That means your degree of alignment to God is the exact measure of how much of the power of God will manifest in your life. Not how much you carry, but how much will find expression. So you can carry God as we all believe. But you never see that God show up in your life. In my life. Lord. Be glorified. Will you be glorified. In my life. today can you sing that song lord in my life in my life be glorified 
glorified. Be glorified. In my life. Be glorified. Hallelujah. So what is your own part of the deal as far as your, your transformation is concerned? Remember the purpose of your transformation is to give God space in the earth through your life. That God will find expression through you. That God will find expression through your church man of God. There is so much God can do with that ministry. Woman of God there is so much God can do in you. But your St. Patrick's a great man that lived a man had died brothers and sisters six months he was dead and saint patrick's came and said where is the grave true story when they showed the grave he signed his signature on it saint patrick he said dig it they brought the man out alive in this earth men whose mindsets have authorized heaven to make them gods i shared with you about ancient i study a lot about revivals i was sharing with you about the monk that they were building a cathedral and a wood stopped halfway there was no money to buy another one he held it and drew it and completed it Hi. transformation that makes the earthly to become the heavenly catherine kuman she was so transformed to a point that she was preaching on a pulpit and she left the stage but she was still floating she didn't realize she had left the stage apostle babalola for those of you who know the founder of cac that man preached to a point he was levitating and going they held him and brought him back ew kenyon men who allowed the possibilities of god you don't die less than 70 in his church he will raise you back to life one time a man had a, a, an accident a car climbed his legs broke his bones and all ew kenyon did was to look at him because he sees through his eyes and he looked at him allowing heaven to pass through your eyes and the bones started making noise we say it today like mystics but men, the Bible says men whom the earth is not worthy of. How did they live? Imagine brothers and sisters, Elijah, he was talking with God on the mountain and they came to interrupt him. He called fire. Your atmosphere opened. Fire came, consumed them and they went back physically. Daniel entered the lion's den. And looked at the lions and smiled. Joshua told the son to stand still. There is something we are missing in our generation. And Bill Johnson got it on the spot. He called it the supernatural power of a transformed mind. How that heaven wants to find expression. Do you know how much God can do with koinonia? But in my little mind. Imagine how much I limit him. And God says, well, I will just manage with the little space. And see the little things that trickles of his presence that happened during miracle service. And some of you are clapping and God is saying, I wish, I wish. That's the reason why God transports men from region to region. He's transporting himself through them. Tomorrow we are going to a bomber shop. And God is going there through the decree we have given him. He expects to do great things, but he wants to do more. Unfortunately, Joshua Selman has refused to be as yielded as God wants. So probably there is somebody in a mortuary that is not supposed to die. But I may not be able to raise him. And I will go there and when they finish, people will come with seeds and offering. And say you are a powerful man. And then our arrogance will further prove our mediocrity. Because there is no passion to press again. Don't compare yourself with what is happening around in our generation. You will be a weak Christian. Compare yourself with men who live like gods on the earth. They threw Paul, took him out of the city and killed him. When they killed him, they went. The other apostles came. Yeah, Paul, this is how you have done. Just shook himself. Say, guys, 
this i will talk to you later on paul said i am in the straight between i'm standing the line dividing the realm of the spirit and the physical realm that's where i am i'm choosing to go or to stay but i'll stay because it's profitable for you can you imagine a man like that john his mind was so aligned they threw him in boiling pot and nothing happened but today when they shoot you you will die at once Let me finish up so we'll pray. So what then is your assignment? What's your challenge? Write these two scriptures. Philippians 2.12 and Philippians 2.5. That's your assignment. Let this mind be in you. Permit this mind. 2 verse 5. Let this mind. Koinonia. God wants to find expression in Zaria. God wants to find expression in your family. Give him space. Don't limit the mighty one. He is mighty but limited mighty but limited mighty but limited through you what is your challenge write it that means your assignment and your task to work out that salvation to contend for transformation and alignment so as to grant more space and more access to God to find expression through you in the earth. That's your singular challenge. That's your singular task. Content for transformation. Give God space through your life. My goal in life is that heaven will find so much expression through me. That there will be more outworkings of the kingdom unconsciously than consciously. I look forward to a time when there will be accidents and I will just come and God will say thank you. I've always wanted to raise them but I need an access point. Joshua Selman be there. Hey. See, the Bible says you shall lay hands on the sick. It didn't say you shall say be healed. Just take me near that person and he will be healed. God wants to go to your home but he wants to travel through you. transformation the hallmark of transformation is oneness with god unity the hallmark of transformation is where your mind literally becomes the mind of christ your mind becomes a full expression becomes a mindset that totally agrees with the word of god are you willing to give up that culture to take up the mind of christ are you willing to give up the past to take up the mind of Christ? Give him space. Give him space. Very quickly before we pray, the process of transformation. What is the dynamics? So how are you changed? What's, what's, what does it entail to move from the earthly to the heavenly? Number one, the first key to transformation is a life of prayer. The first key that translates you from the earthly to the heavenly. Praying in the spirit. When you pray in the spirit, that transformation is happening. Whether you know it or not. That's why I encourage as many of you whose prayer lives are weak. Join the prayer department for one month so that you can have a platform to fire up your prayer life. Pray in the night. Pray in the day. Separate days for prayers. Prayer in the spirit is one of God's technology for changing a man from being earthly to being heavenly. It's one of the systems through which he enlarges you and creates more space for himself. Prayer is like molting. The way reptiles, snakes, molt. You, see, you know what happens when they want to expand. Right? They come out of their current shell. It's a difficult process. It's a sacrifice. Because snakes don't have hands. And they have to crawl through. And when they come out, you now see the cocoon. And the snake is big. Before it now crystallizes. That's how you grow. 
So while you are praying, investments of prayer, one hour, two hours, three hours. Sometimes you just dedicate the time, morning till night, worship and you just pray. With fastings, of course, periodically, not every time. And something is happening to you. All of a sudden you find out that heaven can find expression more. You wouldn't know until you go for one meeting. And while you are standing, you are seeing people shouting everywhere. And you are seeing the power of God moving. And you are surprised. What has happened to me? Space. 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 You've given him space. Prayer is principally a channel for encounter, illumination, and empowerment. Not just petition. Petition is the last aspect of prayer. The primary purpose of prayer is for encounters, for illumination. First Corinthians, let me give you a few scriptures quickly. First Corinthians chapter 14, I won't explain, just write it. Chapter 2 verse 4, the Bible says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men but to God. Right? He speaks mysteries. And then verse 4 of 1 Corinthians 14 says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, edifies builds up, enlarges his spiritual capacity. Number two, Romans chapter 8 from verse 26 and 27. The Bible says, for we know not what to pray for as we ought to. It says, but the spirit, he makes intercession for us. He searches the mind of God. Right? He brings an intermingling. It's like a salt covenant. He says, let us reason together. It happens in the place of prayer. Romans 8, 26 and 27. And then Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Prayer grants you access to light and illumination. Call unto me and I will answer and show thee great and mighty things. Not small and meager things. Great and mighty things. Let me tell you, look at me. There is no amount of Bible study that will substitute for prayer. Do you know why many people are not really getting revelation? Because what we are doing is study alone and not prayer. You can study, but it is prayer that will break that scripture like a shell and release the life to you. Make no mistakes about it. You can sit down and study forever. Get up and carry the letter that kills. Go and teach and not bless people. But through illumination, is in the place of prayer and when you add prayer with fasting it's like a time bomb he said then shall your light break forth like the morning and your health shall spring speedily is this not the fast that i've commanded that means there is a type you can do on your own hunger strike right religious fast but there is a type i have commanded and if you do that your light will break forth like the morning and your health will come speedily James chapter 5 verse 16. The fervent, not joking and trivial prayer. The fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous availed much. Amplified says, is dynamic in its working. So when you pray, when you pray in the spirit, you are enlarging your capacity. You see why we pray? You see why we believe in the ministry of prayer. It's not the works of the Lord to pray and fast. We are not trying to add to what Jesus has done. We are opening up to receive all that he has brought. Number two. The second process of transformation happens through insight and revelation from the word. So here we have the ministry of prayer. And then insight and revelation from the word. Notice I didn't just say the word of God. Is for a reason. Because if I say the word of God, many of us have been reading Bible. But the insight and the revelation, the illumination you get from the word of God. And then in addition to that, our obedience to the word of God is what releases the power of what we believe to produce results for us. Listen, listen. The word of God is like a bag that carries treasures. Your obedience to the principles of the word opens up the bags and releases the treasure inside. 
you know how granite is it's in a shell that's principally how the word of god is when you act your obedience releases what is inside so that it will work for you so it's not enough to just get insight and revelation you must be willing to obey to the latter i wrote something here that is interesting revelation without the willingness to obey is a demonstration of rebellion revelation when you have revelation insight in the bible and you do not have the willingness to obey it you have clearly demonstrated your rebellion a few scriptures mm. proverbs 24 verse 30 let's look at it very quickly we'll look at three scriptures proverbs 24 verse 30 and then acts chapter 8 29 to 30 proverbs 24 verse 30 hallelujah it says 24 verse what 30 i think i may have made a mistake okay let's go to acts 8 verse 29 to 30 while i look that up acts 8 it was a story the story of the utopian enoch watch this that guy could not experience god in his life because he was void of knowledge and understanding and when the spirit said unto philip go near and join yourself to the chariot 30 and philip ran peter to him and had him read prophet isaiah and said what understandest what thou readest not just that you are reading it do you understand it's not enough to just know scriptures and cram scriptures do you understand understanding illumination insight job chapter 22 verse 22 very powerfully job 22 22 receive i pray thee the law from his mouth and lay up his words in your heart receive it don't just read it receive it let light enter you the entrance of thy word give it light there is an enlargement he said write prosperously because of truth the last scripture john chapter 1 verse 12 this is the one that blew my mind the bible says as many as received him who is the him the word but as many not everybody will receive the word many will read the word many will admire the word but very few will receive it he said but as many as received that word that word gives them power to become power to become power to become when you receive the word it gives you power to become what it says not when you read it when you receive it and diligently obey the principles it transforms you to become so the word about titan guarantees your financial future when you receive it you receive it by acting upon it and satisfying the conditions that release the anointing that backs it then it begins to change you from the earthly to the heavenly Number three, the last thing to do in the process of transformation is worship. A life of intense worship. Intense worship. Bible says, do not be drunk with wine wearing in excess. He said, but ye be filled with the Holy Ghost. Speaking to yourself in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Let me tell you something about worship. I've studied it very well. Worship brings the manifest presence of God to your life and your territory. Worship is a magnet. There are three levels of God's presence. There is his omnipresence. His ability to be everywhere at the same time. There is what I call his Emmanuel dimension. That when two people are gathered in a place, he's there in their midst. God with us. But there is his Shekinah. His manifested presence. That dimension is invoked in worship. Second Chronicles chapter 5 verse 12 to 14. Let's hurry up. Second Chronicles 5 12 to 14. 
Second Chronicles 5. It says, And also the Levites, which were singers, all of them of Asaph, of Haman, of Jedutun, with their sons and their brethren, being arrayed in white linen, having cymbals and pastries and psalms, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them a hundred and twenty priests, worshipping and sounding trumpets. Next verse. And it came to pass, as the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord and they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and the cymbals and the instruments of music and praised the Lord saying for the Lord is good for his mercy endured forever that what happened the house was filled with a cloud even the house of the Lord next verse the Shekinah of God came and rested there so that the priests could not minister by reason of the cloud he said for the glory of the Lord had filled the house when you maintain a life of intense worship the glory of God comes your body begins to shake a literal vibration at his presence and you are lying down there soaking in that presence for hours see this is how to walk powerful in the anointing and the glory of God that the cloud the glory of the Lord let me tell you when the glory of the Lord rests upon your life you won't even be able to stand up that Shekinah sicknesses will melt away infirmities will go away the majestic voice of God will come through the cloud and speak to you maintain a life of worship put worship songs in your phones remove all those ungodly songs that keep making your mindset a doorway for demonic activities come and meet the worship team let them do a selection of soaking worship songs for you just lie down in your room you may be sleeping normally but let the songs just play sometimes they may just be hymns like this or songs playing no words to them and you are just soaking and after a while the shekinah of god like a hand resting upon eggs remember what i said about the hand a hand will rest upon an egg and turn that liquid substance to a cheek how much more the glory of god when it rests upon you hallelujah acts chapter 16 verse 25 the bible tells us that paul and silas were locked up in the prison and the Bible says they prayed and they sang. They sang praises to God. And the prisoners had them. He had them. Oh my God. That's why we worship a lot in Koinonia. It's the secret of the presence. It's the secret. Look at every man that walks in the anointing. Every man that walks in the miraculous. Benny Hinn will worship for hours. Dr. Paul Enche would worship for hours. Men who know God, men who carry the anointing, Catherine Kuhlman, all these great people, they would sing hymns and worship for hours. And when the presence rests, wheelchairs will be lifted just by themselves. Your job is to get God to the scene and step out. Our worship team, all of them have been trained to understand the assignment of Koinonia worship team is not to entertain Koinonia. The very assignment of Koinonia worship team is to create the atmosphere where the presence of God finds expression. That's why sometimes they can come and just raise one popular song and just create the atmosphere. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever Alleluia. sing it one more time you are good you are good and your mercy is forever Alleluia. Yeah. you are good Let's sing it one more time. You are good. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
to listen to my message and voice of his presence is the foundation for this we're going to pray we're out of time rise up on your feet just two prayer points but i want you to pray with all your heart i like you to pray and ask the lord and say lord bring me to that place where the mind of christ experientially becomes my mind i'm willing to give you space go ahead and pray i'm willing to give the god of miracles space the god of breakthroughs the god of signs and wonders the god of impartations the god of salvation and revival Pray, man of God. Pray, woman of God. Pray, businessman. Give God space. Hallelujah. Pay yourselves into two, please. You are going to pray. I like you to intercede intensely for your neighbor. Lord, let heaven invade his life. Pray. Let heaven invade his mindset. Let heaven invade his ministry. Let heaven invade his business. Let heaven invade his marriage. Outside, make sure you are praying. Outside, make sure you are praying. Heaven, heaven, invade our minds, invade our souls, invade our souls, invade our bodies. Let the fullness of the capacity the fullness of the possibilities in God find expression hallelujah hallelujah look up you're going to pray for yourself and say Lord in any way I have misrepresented you by refusing to give you space I make up my mind that I will contend for transformation. That healing anointing must come out in my life. After the order of Benny Hinn, after the order of Catherine Kuman, that prophetic mantle must find expression. I refuse to be a weak Christian. I refuse to be a weak man of God. That apostolic anointing will find expression after the order of Paul. After the order of Smith Wigglesworth, after the order of St. Patrick, my territory will experience revival, revival, fire, 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 revival, fire, healing, fire. No playing games, no playing games with destiny. No playing games. Shake it, 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 it. The sick must be healed through my life. The oppressed must be delivered. Sinners must be saved. Sinners must be saved. The church must be equipped through my life. I give you space. My family must receive breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're out of time, but just permit me to raise one more prayer point. Look at me. Look at me. There are two limitations to your being transformed. The first, the gates of hell. 
the solution to that is have an understanding of your authority and exercise it the second is the limitation that your mind gives him the solution content for transformation in prayer and in the word we are going to pray there are forces that have vowed that you will never rise up to give God that level of space there are all kinds of forces but I like you to exercise dominion over yourself and your loved ones you love them some of them don't know what you know lift your voice and cry in the next three minutes please permit me to raise one more prayer point I know we're out of time but this is burning in my spirit look up hallelujah God is doing things fire is burning in this place listen Bishop Oyedeko said there was a time the church in Kaduna was not growing nothing was happening they had the heart they had the mandate but they were spiritual walls and they were fasting together with the pastors lord what is it and the lord told him come out and he came out and he said look and he looked upon the church and he saw a dark cloud he said this is the cloud that is misinterpreting your ministry there are people who are genuine but the perception of others about you and your ministry is either that you are fake or you are controversial there are spirits that make it so so people will not come to receive so people will not come to be blessed there are some of you the helpers of your destiny have been manipulated whenever they want to come to your life something drives them who am i speaking to lift your voice like a priest and challenge gates challenge gates Lift up your heads. Lift up your heads. Lift up your heads. Forces of ancestry. Forces of darkness. Lift up your heads. Forces of delay. Lift up your your head. Forces of stagnation. Lift up your head. Heads, forces of lukewarmness in the name of Jesus lift up your hands pray begin to command decree command decree command release my marriage release my job release my academics release my destiny release my ministry release my mantle release my anointing release my destiny help us release my unction shokote skata mapate koprotokete ekatatata ekete saros marekete sekete oh 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 
catch fire, fire on altars of darkness. We set fire on ropes. We set fire on devils. We command by the fire of the world, by the fire of the blood, by the fire of the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's how you rescue your ministry. That's how you rescue your marriage. That's how those chains will be caught. They won't be caught by joking and playing games. Woe to them who are at ease in Zion. When you confront the gates, then they will open. When you confront the gates that are killing your ministry, then it will open. When you confront the gates stopping your marriage, then it will open. You confront the gates killing your academics, then it will open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to stop. We're out of time. Listen. I want you to take this revelation. God is not limited. We have limited him. And the spirit cries. The spirit cries. If any man will give me space. He said go and borrow vessels. The problem is not the oil. But the container carrying it. If you enlarge the container. The oil will increase. Shut up. Hallelujah. I pray for a restoration. Of every dead prayer life. Every spiritual lukewarmness. That has authorized Satan. To make a chicken out of your life. I empower you tonight. With strength from above. In the name of Jesus. Every zeal. And fire for God. That has died for whatever reason. May he jump back to life today. Hallelujah. Now quickly keep standing everybody. Our time is fast spent. But there are people inside and outside the Lord brought you. And you know that you have not made your ways right with the Lord. You love God. But you know you are tired. You are saying man of God I'm tired of the way my life is. And I'm crying for help. You've never given your heart to the Lord. Or you gave your life to Christ. But for some reasons you found yourself moving in one way or the other. Please make your way inside and outside. We have one minute for this. I'd like you to rush out and come before God. Come, this is a place of empowerment. Welcome home. Don't be ashamed. Don't wait for anybody. I know there are many people outside. Make your way inside. Run to Jesus. The place of empowerment. The encounter that will change your story. Please take God seriously tonight. Don't play games with your destiny. Jesus wants to invade your life. Hallelujah. Keep coming. For those who are here, listen. I salute you and I congratulate you. There is no room for lukewarmness in this Christian race. And let me tell you, no matter where you are, don't feel guilty. You can take off from there. God is willing to reach down to you and start with you. Everybody started from somewhere. Therefore, I want you to lift your right hand. Please, you are not reciting a point. I want this to be from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I've heard your word. And I mean business with you. From this night. Forgive me my sins.